Hello and welcome. This is Darius Barasande, host of the U.S. Revolution. And if you're about to watch this amazing session that we did, then you're part of a group of humans on this planet who are ascending and moving into a higher frequency. You're not here by accident, and I'd like to offer you a special gift that will help you to adjust to some of these frequencies, plug in even deeper, and it's an energy activation MP3 that will double the power of your energy field in less than 57 seconds. It's absolutely free, and it's the first link in the description down below, but it's also gonna let you get to hear calls like this one live and get daily help from healers, teachers, and masters all over the world. It's absolutely free, and it's part of what we're doing every day at UAuth Revolution. So if you feel called in your heart, you can click the link down below, and the special session that you wanted to watch and experience will start right now. I know for people that are new, uh, wondering how in the world did you, did you get here, and why are you so focused on wanting to get to the fundamental structure behind things like miraculous healings? Well, you know, that's a great question. And uh, the way I got here is kind of a funny, funny story. The truth is I grew up as a computer geek. I loved, uh, as a boy, I loved fantasy and Dungeons and & Dragons and Star Trek and Star Wars and all that kind of stuff. And, hey, some of the listeners, and you may have beaten me up in high school. Who knows? <laughs> but it was my dream to go to MIT and become a computer expert because I thought, well, you know, if I can just <clears throat> get the best education and work really hard, I can make a ton of money and have a great life. Okay. Well, you know, it got off to a good start. I did actually end up at MIT, and it was there I discovered the Internet, which, of course, sounds funny today, but back in the 80s, no one had really heard of it yet. And I saw it, it was this technology that could really change the world. And so I made that my specialty. And long story short, I got my bachelor's degree, my master's degree, and I was working towards my PhD as an Internet expert when the Internet boom hit. And so I figured, hey, you know what? I'm one of the world's leading experts on this stuff. There's no reason why I can't go and start a company and make millions of dollars. And so uh, I recruited my lifelong best friend. I dropped out of graduate school moved to California, and we started a company doing websites. And it's kind of funny, the very first website I ever worked on, my first website, was the website for the launch of the Sony PlayStation in 1995. Kind of funny, huh? Wow. And so, long story short, uh, uh, the next few years, uh, I was so driven to succeed, I just pushed through the pain of nonstop 80 to 100 hour work weeks because I really believed that if I just worked hard enough, I could be really successful. And so we had a lot of success. We did websites for a lot of Fortune 500 companies. We worked with Disneyland. We worked with Sony. We worked with Nissan Motors and a lot of big names. We even started a second company to create a revolutionary, revolutionary kind of online game that had never been done before. But it came at a price, which was me working 100 hours a week, nonstop, trying to bootstrap two startup companies right at the wildest part of the Internet boom in the 90s. Yeah. And so uh, after a couple years of this, it really took a toll on me physically. I started to have a lot of pain in my wrist and my elbows and my shoulders. And I figured, heck, you know, when you have something wrong, you just go to the doctor and they'll give you something and you get better. Well, it, didn't, it wasn't quite that easy. And I went to the doctors and they told me that I had a, a really bad case of what we now call repetitive stress injuries. And so I want everyone to know this wasn't just a little tingle in my wrist. I was in nonstop high levels of pain because, again, I just pushed through the pain. I just pushed and pushed and pushed trying to get things done. And it got so bad that I could only drive my car for five minutes at a time because I had to pull over and rest because it hurt too much to hold the steering wheel. I had to move in with my parents because some days I was in so much pain I had to have someone help me cut my food. So imagine being a couple years out of MIT, one of the world's leading Internet experts, and having to live at home and have your mother cut your lunch for you. And I was devastated. But at first, I figured, heck, you know, I'll go to the doctors. They put me in physical therapy and did tests and scans. And long story short, I spent three years in conventional therapies, and it didn't help. Not only did I not get better, I got worse. And everything kind of fell apart in... Uh, what they call the dark night of the soul, which, mm. Darius, I'm sure you and a lot of the listeners 
have gone through, where everything in your life just seems to fall apart. And for me, uh, it started off with uh, me going to the doctors. And over the years, I kind of worked my way up the food chain. And after three years of therapies, I finally got an appointment with the head doctor at Curlin Job. This was the premier physical therapy clinic. I was alongside Olympic athletes and, you know, Lakers and Clippers, right? This was like the best of the best. Mm. And I figured, heck, if anyone can cure me, it's this guy, right? And so I walk into his office. Finally, after three years, I get to see the best doctor. Mm. And I see a man who looks like Colonel Sanders sitting behind a desk. (laughs) And he kind of adjusts his glasses and looks at the papers in front of him and says, son, I'm sorry, but there's nothing that I or any doctor can do for you. You'll always be in pain and you'll never be able to work again. Tell me, son, is there someone that can take care of you until you die? And that was what I got out of it. He told me, you will never work again. You will never be out of pain. Uh, Put me on permanent disability and told me that I will need to have people take care of me for the rest of my life. At the time, I was 27 years old. Mm. So, you know, you can imagine how how horrifying that was. Uh, Right around the same time, I had a falling out with my partners because I couldn't work anymore. And long story short, <clears throat> they stole a multi-million dollar company from me, and I ended up broke in deep debt, living with my parents in constant pain with no hope of ever recovering. And what I call the cherry on top of that hot fudge Sunday was <laughs> my business partner was my lifelong best friend. Mm. I had recruited him to start this company, and we had been best friends. We were like brothers. I mean, the, the six or seven years I was at MIT, we talked on the phone every single day. We were that close. And when, when this all went down, he started, I found out he had been secretly dating the woman I was in love with. Mm. So not only did I uh, lose my health permanently, I was told, not only did I lose the multi-million dollar company that was taken from me, but I lost my best friend and the woman I was in love with. And you know what? I got depressed. I started drinking and self-medicating in a variety of ways, but I was lucky. I had a friend who intervened and said, hey, Brent, you know what? When your life goes to hell like this, this is when you need positive thinking. Mm. And so I got turned on to positive thinking. Nowadays, we call it the law of attraction. Back in the 90s, we called it positive thinking, but it's a lot of the same material. And so I went on this mad binge of positive thinking. I went to weekend workshops <clears throat> where they'd have you dance on the stage and high-five your friends and shout-out affirmations. <laughs> I put power words on my walls. No kidding. I made vision yeah. boards. Uh, I said my mantras 108 times every day, like seven different mantras, because someone told me if you do that, it has to become true. Yes. And so I was just doing all this stuff. But you know what? It didn't work. Mm. And it was so frustrating. All it did was cost me a lot of money. And I got so angry that it didn't work, I really felt betrayed. And I I tore down all my power words and vision boards, and I didn't just throw them away. I burned them in the fireplace. That's Mm. how angry I was. And so then, again, another uh, short period of depression, self-medication, you know, nihilist thinking, I had another friend who turned me on to alternative medicine. And they said, hey, Brent, you know, if you're open to it, Maybe alternative medicine could help you where conventional medicine couldn't. And I was desperate. I was willing to try anything. And so, you know, long story short, I spent five years as a full-time patient on total disability. All I did was run around and get treatment. Wow. I had physical therapy. I had occupational therapy. uh, I went to acupuncturists and homeopaths and osteopaths. And, I mean, I could go on and on and on. I mean, it was literally a full-time job running around getting treated. Every person I saw told me the same thing. They'd meet me. They'd review my history. They'd say, hey, Brent, I'm so glad you found me. I know I can help you, yada, yada. So I'd give them some money, and we'd start the treatments, right? And, I mean, I had a whole closet full of medical devices. I had cold lasers and magnets and infratonics and ultrasonics and electric stems. And, I mean, you just I could go on for hours about all the things I've tried. And not only did it not help me, I got worse. So after five years as a full-time patient, uh, I eventually agreed to have an experimental surgery because I found a doctor who thought, well, he has this new procedure that he thought could help me. And so I made an appointment and 
had the surgery, and again, long story short, the surgery was a disaster. Mm. When I woke up from surgery, I couldn't move my right arm at all. It was completely frozen at the end. Wow. Arm. Yep. Wow. And that was kind of the, the lowest of the low. Uh, it was right after that that my first wife left me. Uh, then I was wow. injured in a car accident and had a whiplash and concussion and lower back pain. And I mean, it was just a nightmare. Hello and welcome. This is Derry Sparzande, host of the Wealth Revolution. And if you enjoyed that snippet of one of our interviews, I'd invite you to just scroll down for one second and click the link down below. You're going to get access not only to a free gift that's going to double the power of your energy field in just 57 seconds, you're also going to get to be a part of the UF Revolution and listen to interviews just like the ones you heard that are happening live right now, daily, where I interview some of the top healers, teachers, and masters in the field of energy transformation, energy healing, consciousness, ascension, and more. Plus, you're going to get to be on live calls where you'll get your questions answered, you'll get to submit them via webcast, you'll even get to be one-on-one -on -one live on the phone and get energy healing help daily. It's all part of what we've been doing. So get up to date, click the link, join and be a part of it. And if you enjoyed this video or you'd like to see more of it, click the like button or subscribe. I always upload new content and I give weekly energy updates. So please let us know how we can serve you. And thanks for watching and being in my life. Much love.